thinks it has something to do with how the palladium is prepared. He's working with this Italian government lab called Enea, where some of the most reliable palladium is made. With so many open questions, we wanted to find out whether cold fusion is more than a tempest in a teapot. So we asked the American Physical Society, the top physics organization in America, to recommend an independent scientist. They gave us Rob Duncan, vice chancellor of research at the University of Missouri and an expert in measuring energy. When we first called you uh -huh. and said, we'd like you to look into cold fusion for 60 minutes, what did you think when you hung up the phone? I think my first reaction was something like, well, isn't that, hasn't that been debunked? We asked Duncan to go with us to Israel, where a lab called Energetics Technologies has reported some of the biggest energy gains yet. We are delivering um, power into the cell. When I got there, I just kept asking about, okay, how do you know this? How do you know that? How do you get 30 percent? I mean, Duncan spent two days examining cold fusion experiments. I mean, I'm just skeptical because I'm always skeptical. And investigating whether the measurements were accurate. Do you measure that aluminum temperature directly or just assume it's equal? And when you walked out of the Israeli lab, you thought what? I thought, wow, they've done something very interesting here. He crunched the numbers himself and searched for an explanation other than a nuclear effect. I found that the work done was carefully done and that the excess heat, as I see it now, is quite real. Are you surprised to hear yourself saying this? Very much. I never thought I'd say that. <laughs> and we found that the Pentagon is saying it too. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, known as DARPA, did its own analysis, and we obtained this internal memo that concludes there is, quote, no doubt that anomalous excess heat is produced in these experiments. Do you feel vindicated after all these years? I don't have any real need for vindication. I know what I've seen. It, that was a pretty big smile on your face, though. <laughs> it's, it's good. It's not bad. Certainly it's good. Now the Pentagon is funding more experiments at the Naval Research Lab in Washington, D.C., and at McCubrey's lab in California. We wondered what Richard Garwin would think of the Defense Department's appraisal. The experiments leave no doubt that anomalous excess heat is produced. That's a statement. You just don't buy that. Well, I am living proof that there is doubt. Now, they can say that, there, that an excess heat is being produced, but they can't say there's no doubt. All they can say is they don't doubt, but I doubt. If you ask me, is this going to have any impact on our energy policy, it's impossible to say because we don't fundamentally understand the process yet. But to say that we don't fundamentally understand the process, and that's why we're not going to study it, it's like saying I'm too sick to go to the doctor. You know, I wonder how you feel about going public endorsing this phenomenon on 60 Minutes when maybe 90 percent, I'm guessing, uh -huh. of your colleagues think that it's crackpot science. I certainly was among those 90 percent before I looked at the data. And I can see where they'll be very concerned when they see this piece. All I have to say is read the published re results, talk to the scientists, never let anybody else do your thinking for you. There was one more scientist we wanted to find, a man who left America in disgrace and retired with his wife to the English countryside. Martin Fleischmann, the man who announced cold fusion to the world, is hindered now by years, diabetes, Parkinson's disease, and maybe a little bitterness. At home, he pulled out an improved version of his experiment, something that he was working on when he was hounded out of science. When you hold that in your hand and you think back on what's happened these last 20 years, what do you think? A wasted opportunity. Wasted? Mm. Because it was discredited at the time. Mm. He told us he has two regrets calling the nuclear effect fusion, a name coined by a competitor, if you loaded the cell with heavy water, and having that news conference, something he says the University of Utah wanted. Now that you know that your experiments have been replicated and, and improved upon in labs all around the world, I wonder, do you see a day when homes will be powered by these cells, when cars will be powered by these cells? Hmm. I think so. 
It, it wouldn't take very long to implement this. You make me feel that I should take a part in this. <laughs> I'm getting you interested again? <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> the potential is exciting. The potential is exciting, yes.